So let's talk about the much awaited file store for AWS. So let's talk about the much awaited file store for AWS. So it's not that we have only block storage and there is another storage option that you would have already probably used it in your daily life that is file storage. I hope everyone remembers out here what file storage is. It's pretty simple. You have a folder where you store your files and it can be a nested folder as well where you need to iterate the folder path to reach the file like we do in our operating systems we use like Windows, Mac or Linux. So the Elastic File System or Amazon EFS provides a simple, scalable, fully managed Elastic NFS file system for use with AWS Cloud Services and on-premise resources. So it is built to scale the demand to petabytes without disrupting applications, growing and shrinking automatically as you add or remove files, eliminating the need to provision and manage capacity to accommodate the growth. As being elastic, it can increase as per your demand. So Amazon EFS provides or offers two storage classes, the standard storage class and the infrequent access storage class that is EFS IA. The infrequent access is for inactive data that is at rest and EFS provides super cost reduction for that as well. So the EFS IA storage class costs only $0.025 per GB per month and that is about 1 rupee 78 paise per GB per month when you calculate it into INR or the Indian rupees. And if you and you can achieve that by simply enabling EFS lifecycle management on your file system and files not accessed according to the lifecycle policy you choose will be automatically and transparently moved into EFS IA that is infrequent access. And if you think there is only 20% of data that is with effective usage, it will cost a reasonable 0.08 GB per month that is rupees 5 and 71 paise per GB per month if you convert to INR. It's quite reasonable considering the amount of features that you get. Amazon EFS is designed to provide massively parallel shared access to thousands of Amazon EC2 instances, enabling your application to achieve high levels of aggregate throughput and IOPS with consistent low latencies. So Amazon EFS is a regional service storing data within uh, and across multiple availability zones for high availability and durability. And Amazon EC2 instances can access your file system across availability zones, regions and VPCs while on-premise servers can access using AWS Direct Connect or AWS VPN. So I want to reiterate on this point again. Amazon EC2 instances can access your file system across AZs, regions and VPCs while on-premise servers can access using AWS Direct Connect and AWS VPN. So we can visualize the same way that we have visualized all the things before. So we can visualize the way EFS helps with high availability. Uh, so we have our AWS EC2 instances here and with the help of our security group, we can access the same EFS across multiple availability zones. So EFS or Elastic File Store helps with content management and data sharing. And if you see the example here, we can easily understand that you can control the access for EFS using your security groups. And that's the way we provide access to our EFS to our EC2 instances. So let's jump in and get some hands on. So let's see the hands on demo for EFS or Elastic File Storage. So first thing that I wanted to do was to create the instance or launch the instance. But prior to that, I wanted to create a security group. So there's a security group that we have here and uh, I'll create a new security group for myself so that we have like uh, my EFS SG. So let it be like this. And this is my first security group for EFS. Okay, so the inbound rules, let us keep it as it is. And the outbound rule is allow all. This is fine click on create so that we have created the security group right now we'll go to EFS you have to go to the services list and click right EFS so managed file storage for EC2 once you click on this you will get this page Amazon elastic file system or EFS scalable elastic fully managed cloud native NFS file system for $0.08 per GB 
they are quite interested about the pricing uh, okay so we don't need to be concerned about that okay for now so let's create the file system so you have the default vpc here and it is automatically assigned to the default security groups that we have and it is so it will be available for ap south 1a 1b and 1c and there will be automatic ip that will be assigned to it that's the dynamic ip that will be assigned to it and what we need to do is we need to delete this because we have created our own security group for this so i'll just go ahead and add this my efs sg okay now that we have added this security groups so what happens here is the first step that we have here is the configure network access and that is done we have done the configuration access and because of the help of the security groups you know which instance or which ip address is allowed uh, to the default uh, network file storage and the next step would be configure file system settings so when you click on next you can as well add a tag here name and i will give us efs pythonholic okay and the lifecycle policy i don't have any lifecycle policy as of now so choose throughput mode it will be bursting or provision not a problem so it can be a bursting so i would like to choose the general purpose performance mode here and enable encryption of data at rest i don't want to do this as of now okay life cycle policy also i'm not going to set and click on next so once you have this you can disable root access by default force and read only access by default and force in transit encryption for all the clients and you can set the policy for this and you can write the json code as well uh, to set the policy and you can add the access points so you can create access points to provide application access to your file system and optionally you can create the POSIX identity and root directory for all connections to this access point okay so with the help of this you can provide permission or policies to different access points that you have but currently we are not going to have anything so just click on next and uh, now what we have here is the file system access uh, the default VPC the availability zones that we have and automatic IP address that is going to be assigned and the security group that we wanted to assign we have already assigned so the name of the tag is EFS Pytholic that is the EFS name that I had given so general purpose performance mode throughput is bursting encrypted no lifecycle policy is none and click on create file system so once we have created this file system as you can see here the mount state target is creating is in the state of creating right now we have the network interface id is available to us the mount target id also meanwhile the state is coming up what we would like to do is we would like to make use of this isn't it so for using this as well you need to create instances so go back to the ec2 so now that you've created your efs so what i wanted to do is i wanted to make use of it isn't it so it's not just creating the efs we just want to see how it works as well so the first thing that i wanted to do is i want to create two instances in two separate availability zones and i want to show you how we can access both of them and i'll show you some magic as well so launch the instance and the first one that i want is i want to have it in my region that i have the availability zone that i have is AP South 1A and the basic configuration that we have here. Okay, so I'll add a tag. So, so EFS1. Okay, and security group that I want. I want to select the existing one that I have, the Pytholic SG1, which gives me access to SSH to the instance. And click on review and launch. Launch it. okay let's wait for our instances to be ready then we'll make use of them so we have one instance one is an ap south 1a and the other one is an ap south 1b so i have my terminals ready and i'll connect to the instances one by one So to mount the EFS, we need to go back to the EFS service. So that we click on EFS or you can type in as well. And this is the EFS uh, file system that we had created. 
and there's the file system id that you have fs hyphen ba07a66b so when you click on this one so you get all the details here right so along with this you get the mounting instructions as well so click on this link and uh, if you're using an amazon ec2 or linux ec2 instance install the efs mount helper with the following command okay so for now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a, a root login okay for both of them and what i'm going to do is i'm going to install this util in both of the machines okay see now it's already done okay we have installed the utils package in both the instances so the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our efs mount directory so if i do here mkdir efs i'll go ahead and create here as well okay if you do ls you get the efs here as well as the efs here and the next thing if you want to mount the efs onto this particular instance you need to run this command so uh, sudo mount hyphen t the efs file system and this is the id of the efs file system that we had created okay click on enter and now this is not working do you know why this is pretty strange but we can go back to the security groups concept where we used to add something to get it working so that it can access a particular entity that's right we have missed adding our elastic file store to our security group okay so that's what we are going to do right now so click on Control z just leave it for now we'll come back to this once again so you have your security groups here right and this is the one that we created for our elastic file storage our elastic file system and we haven't added any inbound rules and which means no one can access this network file storage or the elastic file storage here so click on edit go to nfs you can get the option of nfs here yes i got it and you have to give the security group as the one that you're trying to access okay this is the pytholic sg1 that i want once you have given this and you have allowed these both two machines to access the nfs or the elastic file storage add the rule so once you have added the inbound rule for the security group that we had for the two instances these two instances will now be able to access the nfs or the elastic file system so once you have added this the next thing that you're going to do is click on save so once you have saved this run the command again and this should work it's already mounted i guess so click on copy paste it here okay click on ls click on ls here as well so now the interesting part that we have here is if i go back and type efs okay just stick to this one and uh, you can go here as well cd efs okay we have mounted efs to the file system that we have here in both the instances okay so let's suppose i create a file so now i'm inside the efs and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file here hello and i'm going to put it and i'm going to put this inside one file that i have my efs.txt that's it click on ls so you have the my efs.txt file already there now if you see i have created the my efs.txt here you want to see some magic click on ls see isn't it amazing so it's basically not magic or anything it's basically like we have attached the single file system to both the instances so if you create or if you modify any property in this file system because it is mounted in both the instances 
it will reflect the same way across all the instances that has been mounted to so let's suppose if i do a rm hyphen rf or i would delete this file okay go on ls the file is gone so that's how simple it is to use your elastic file system and that's how interesting it is so i hope you liked it and it's quite informative and enjoyable to basically try it and get a hands-on demo for efs and uh, if you have any doubts please put them in the comment section below and if you have any doubts uh, while creating the instances or the ec2 instances that you have please refer to the previous sections that we have covered for ec2 i think this is enough for the demo right now i hope you had a great time so moving on <music>